Hi there, it's Steph. Thanks for popping by. Today I'm sharing with you a card I made using this paper smoochie stamp set called Space Cadet. Um, I've seen a few weeks or maybe even months ago um, this kind of cards. Um, well, suppose we can call them interactive cards um, where there's some element of it move round and round and round and it has another name, spinning cards I think. Um, and I wanted to give it a try. So in Instead of using little blending sponges, I've used some little sponge daubers um, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm not that impressed with the result. The ink doesn't blend very well, it kind of, you can see some very strong black dots um, and that, that's not so great. I've done this kind of space background before and the blending sponges work much much better so just something for you to know um, that I've experienced. But anyway, I just carried on with it, I blended as well as I could. It's space background so once I put those water droplets on and I lift the colour, I put a few more. Um, it doesn't really matter if it's super blended in the background. I also used some Ranger Picket Fence paint. Um, and that one, once it's dry, you don't lift it off. But it takes a while to dry, so bear that in mind. I used some Memento Tuxedo Black to stamp my images on some Nina Solo White card. Um, and that's also a paper I used for the background, by the way. So I did not use watercolor paper, I used Nina. Um, and I used my Copic, uh, co my Copic markers, sorry, and um, the Memento Tuxedo Black is Copic resistant, so that's good for that. Um, for the first rocket, I I tried to do some tip-to-tip -tip technique for some reason. I was trying to get a different result, and when I did the second one, um, I just did dark to light, and it went much faster, uh, and the result was absolutely the same. So. You know, just stick to what you know for that. Um, three different shades and it works perfectly fine. For the flames, however, I did use some tip to tip because I was using the yellow and the red. The red would have been too dark for that, so I used some yellow on the red to get a bit of orange uh, and that worked fine for me. I did the same thing for this little planet. I skipped forward a bit because it's the same colouring twice, so you don't need to see each image being coloured. Uh, but it's the same colour and the same colouring. I've tried to pick images in that stamp set that seemed to me um, that they were symmetrical in the middle, uh, meaning that when I stick them onto the back of each other, uh, they should match. Turned out that the aliens are not quite symmetrical in that way, uh, but I made it work, I will show you after how. I used the grey Copic markers to do um, the windows and to add a little bit of shading behind the alien. And I really like these markers actually because I don't know, the result is just really nice. Um, I do want to buy some warm greys as well, these are the cool greys, so hopefully in the near future. Um, and the last little image, um, it's not to uh, use as a moving element, but just to add onto my card really, um, and I did it in grey as well. So once I'm done with that, I will do all the fussy cutting off camera because that takes forever. <laughs> Then I took a piece of Nina Solo White card and I cut off um, my frame and then I did the same thing with some double sided foam tape um, and then I went back to my little images. I put some Wink of Stella and I used my black Copic Multiliner just to go over the lines where um, I basically the colour went beyond the edges and I just wanted it to be neat so when that does happen, which it does sometimes because I oversaturate the paper quite a lot, I just use a Copic Multiliner and it's great to hide this kind of little defect, let's call it. So anyway, then I used my frame and I uh, traced it onto the card, I used my trimmer and I cut off that frame and I mean if you have rectangular dies it's awesome but I don't so that's what I do and I mean it works fine it's just it probably would be a bit neater with a die uh, but you do it what you have and that's what I have so here we go then I place my frame onto it and I will just cut off the excess with my trimmer uh, so it is to the size of the frame the cards, blank cards I get in the UK are not exactly the same size that um, the dies that are made in the US, so I just adapt to that. Then I took my frame, it's a stitch uh, frame by the way, and I used my free Copic, yellow Copic markers, and I just color the frame, uh, I put a little bit, I try to darken it a bit around the edges just to give it a little bit more depth for really. it, uh, and I go all the way around. Then I glued my frame onto the double sided foam just to make sure that the result is neat, it looks really nice 
comics on the edges because there's no uh, foam tape cut, you know, like old dodgy wonky, whatever you want to call it. Um, that foam tape is awesome. I really, really like it. So I recommend it. And then I added um, my space backgrounds, uh, which is cut so that I can open it and put a message into it and then close it and then it will be the background for the spinning images. I use that uh, roll-on tape which is really good actually. It's a bit more expensive but it's really good and it saves me time. I then put my frame onto the card. Um, I know sorry beforehand I actually did my gritting yet because I realized oh I don't have a gritting. <laughs> so I put one. I used some uh, an embossing body bag uh, to remove the static. I stamped my uh, greeting and little images with some Vesemark and use some Ranger uh, white super fine powder um, to emboss. I then wet emboss with my heating gun. Uh, you let the heat gun heat up a little bit just in case you knew it embossing. Uh, and then I melted the embossing powder, but not for too long because the paper started to warp. So I placed it under something really heavy after that. Uh, then I went back to my little images and I attached the thread. So I use that same glue, which is pretty strong, so that's good. Uh, and I put the thread between on one image and then I added the second one. And for me, it was the best way to proceed. I mean, it's my very first spinning card. So if I find a better way later, I'll let you know, but that's how I did it. For the fact that the images didn't line up perfectly, I just basically used a black Copic marker and I went all the way around the edges. And honestly, it it looks pretty good. It's not perfect, but it looks pretty good. I'm very happy with that. I tried so many different layers for the spinning elements, uh, and I really struggled. And then in the end, I thought it'd be nice to hide the greeting. So when someone receives it, they don't know what exactly what it is. They probably will know it will be their birthday, but um, they will only really see the greeting when they open the card. So I thought that would work quite well. I used that um, little blue tape to tape the thread onto the table to make sure it was straight and tight and then I glued my frame onto it and then you will notice as the more I try to spin the element and the more my thread loosened up and I think it's just because of the type of thread I use and unfortunately I can't change that but for my X card I will definitely use something different so my advice would be just check the thread before you go ahead and do that and I tried to take a little video of it spinning for you it's not that easy I was a bit off camera I'm sorry but um, I mean it does spin it's just that thread is a bit loose so mm. Voila, that's something to improve for next time. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. That'll be my last video for a while. So I hope you have a great week and see you in a few weeks. Bye.